about winners. FMCG index has hit a record high. What are the reasons for the up move and what are the, who are the key contributors? Well, Mangalam has joined us. Mangalam, you normally mentioned FMCG is life. i tell you what, a lot of people would have been hoping FMCG was in everyone's portfolio. Because the kind of returns you've seen, I think you've put out a record out there, right? In more than 10 years, it's lost out only a couple of years, the index. Tell us more. With well, the great Indian consumption story, that's what everyone talks about, right? 140 crore people in the country. Obviously, someone is consuming yeah. something at any given point in time. And that's what's reflected in the way the FMCG index has moved as well. And the milestone that it has crossed today after being a record high is that 50,000 mark. So the FMCG index is at uh, above 50,000. So every time in cricket, uh, someone scores a half century or something, the batsmen get up, right? So what I'll try to do is, for FMCG... And sake, tell us who are those batsmen who are going yes, to be. I'll talk about those batsmen as well. So, you know, as far as the FMCG index is concerned, um, it's been a big mover. If you just take a look at it in this year itself, we haven't even uh, completed 2023. The FMCG index is uh, rallied by about 14%. This compares with the Nifty at around 2% itself. In the last 12 months too, we've seen the FMCG index rally about 32%. This compares with the Nifty at 13%. In fact, in the last 15 years, there have been only two occasions where the FMCG index has given negative returns. So it was once in FY19 and the other one was FY9. Of course, FY9 had the Lehman crisis itself. Key con constituents of the FMCG index. The top two batsmen are always ITC and HUL, depending on who's outperforming at what point in time. So HUL currently is at the second spot with 22% weight, ITC 33% weight, Nestle 7.8%, Britannia 6.5%. But Varun Beverages has been the standout performer from uh, you know the lower order batsmen as well, doing extremely well. From the 52-week low, while the FMCG index is up 40%, ITC is the key contributor, 72% rally from its 52 week low, whereas HUL by its sheer weight, despite a 26% rally, has been among the big contributors and Varun Beverages has come out and played the knockout game at uh, towards the dying hours of the innings. So 145% jump from its 52-week low on Varun Beverages itself. From a point-to-point -point contribution from its 52-week low, the FMCG index has rallied, rallied about 13,650 points. More than 50% of the gains coming in from ITC, 7,450 points. HUL, 2,100 points. And we have Varun Beverages giving it 1,200 points as well. Uh, so far, the results have been not bad. In fact, the management commentary has been good as well. They're talking about gradual recovery in rural demand. They're talking about margin expansion as well as raw material uh, inflation tempers. And at the same time, they're talking about drastic changes in the way the companies are looking at distribution, production and digital. So these are growth areas for the company. While the FMCG index has been a wealth creator in a lot of people's portfolios, remember wealth creators don't come for cheap. But currently, by virtue of, uh, you know, the growth prospects that we see, we have the FMCG index at, 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 at a not very big premium to their 10-year average. Barring ITC, which is trading at a mild premium to their 10-year average, all the other stocks are very close to the 10-year average multiples itself. Okay, thank you very much uh, for that. Very interesting uh, analysis there. ITC and HUL, the top two uh, batsmen right, uh, right there. So the